We emerged into this market as the newcomers, you know, the new kids on the block, so to speak. And, and you know, there were some advantages to that. And there were obviously some obstacles that we had to overcome. So welcome to our Dealer Insider video. We have a special treat for you guys today. Not only do we have one guest, but we have two which means double the nuggets, double the education, double the knowledge that we're going to walk away with. So welcome to Michael LaMotta, CEO, and Ed B. Castro, General Counsel and COO. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited to be here. Yes, yeah, nice to be here. Thank you. So Ed B., I'm starting with you. Congratulations. You are one of our 2021 Women at the Wheel for Auto Success. Yeah, thank you so much. It's such an honor. I'm so thankful for the recognition and I'm so thankful for all of my you know, mentors and everyone who supported me throughout my growth in the industry to, to get to this point. It's That's really great. an honor to be named among such strong, intelligent, capable, talented, hardworking women in the industry. Our industry's come a long way. I'm excited to see where we go. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourselves. Tell me how you got in the industry um, tell me how you guys work together, what you're doing. Uh, you well, sure. So I started in the industry like, you know, many others in, in this field, uh, you know, uh, retail and, you know, kind of worked my way through retail before uh, moving over to this side of the business uh, in 2008, 2009 and started this company you know, really with an eye on trying to make some changes in the industry, things that as a dealer frustrated me about the service contract world. And, you know, it's been a quest ever since then to, you know, really realize that vision. And I've had a lot of help along the way. Uh, if it wasn't for, you know, the opportunity I was given to jump into this side of the business, I wouldn't have met Edvi. And, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of where the story continues. Yeah, I, I started in the industry early on in my legal career. I The first firm that I worked at professionally was an automotive firm. They focused primarily on buy-sell, and I eventually transitioned into a little bit more of a general practice, but notwithstanding whatever it was I was handling, there was always kind of this automotive industry spin to it. It was like pulling me back in, whether it be just a client who had property on which dealerships were located or a review of franchise agreements or shareholder agreements between, you know, businesses relative to the industry and uh, even employment matters relative to the industry. And that's how actually my introduction to Michael and to DOWC came. We um, served as outside counsel to the company in its infancy stages. And I was very blessed to have the opportunity to really help grow it from the start. Um, after serving as outside counsel for, for an extended period of time, it just made more sense given that I was you know, writing the agreements, focusing on compliance, helping to, in the best way I knew possible, drive the business that I come in house. And I was, I was looking, I was looking for that opportunity um, because I became so passionate about what I was doing, about the industry, uh, the difference I could make for at that point their clients, uh, now ours. That's awesome. So, as you both know. Inventory is such a huge issue right now, and dealers are so concerned that that they won't be able to, you know, meet that supply and, um, you know, meet the expectations of their customers. How can dealers be resilient during this time? Yeah, I I recently published an article directly on point with regard to kind of the swing of the pendulum between the challenges that were faced by dealers during the pandemic. And then the challenges that dealers are facing now post-pandemic, including obviously the inventory shortage, the chip shortage, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and the point of that article and what we keep coming back to uh, as a result of our goal from a structure perspective and a business perspective and supporting our dealers is that the key way to be resilient is to have access to, to cash, to capital, so that you can use it as you need it. So, so that is a great point. How does having access to cash make a difference for dealers? 
So I think Michael can can probably chime in on this directly. He he glazed over a little bit of his background early on in the interview. Um, but what's key is that he he was a dealer uh, for a large part of his career and his professional life, I guess in a past life, you could say. And um, in 2008, as a result of the economic climate during that time, you know, he was put in a position where he had to make certain decisions um, based on whether or not he had access to the capital that had been generated through the sale of his f &I products. You know, he was in the correct structure, he was in the correct setup, he was participating, um, but ultimately he didn't have access to that. And that uh, set him on a separate course. Now again, it, it was to my benefit, I'm blessed to be here, here we are years <laughs> later, um, and, and I'm enjoying every minute of it, but maybe you could speak to that and the difference that it made, or could make. Apparently one person's demise is another person's. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, yeah, as said, he said, you know, because of the experience I had, you know, in the economic downturn of 2008, you know, I wasn't able to gain access to the capital that I had been putting away through the f &I products we were selling for a better part of 15 years, 10 to 15 years. And that was a eye opener. You know, when I needed the money the most, it just wasn't available. So when I got into this side of the industry, it ha I had to accomplish that. I had to figure out a way to not allow dealers we were doing business with to kind of fall victim to the same set of circumstances that I found myself in in 2008. And I think, you know, fast forward 2021, we are, we are there as a company with our partners. We are able to, to really realize the vision early on, which was to give that control over to the dealers when they need it the most. And, you know, we saw a small version of it take place last year during COVID. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, we've written some articles about the 100-year flood and how mm -hmm. the 100-year flood seems to be happening a lot quicker than 100 years these days, right? And I don't know what's causing the frequency, but, you know, we saw it in 2019-20 with COVID and our dealers absolutely were able to lean on the access to capital, especially while, while they were waiting for PPP funds, you know, while, while, while they were waiting for the states to allow them to reopen their doors, there were mandatory shutdowns, which is catastrophic, as you might imagine, for a dealership because they need people coming through the doors to generate parts, service, and sales revenue. So, you know, that was a big accomplishment for us to see dealers accessing the capital because it was really what our intent was when we first started the company to design that. And then we, we got to see it come to fruition. And that was a real, really good accomplishment. Yeah. And dealers were leveraging the capital for um, inventory purposes, new acquisitions during what was otherwise a really difficult period, maintaining really talented personnel. Um, and on top of just having generated the capital, having access to it, to invest it as they saw fit, right? There was a lot of opportunity over the last year uh, to good leverage point. it in that regard. Yeah. Well said. So, right, that kind of brings me to a point. Right now, hiring is a really big topic and just finding the right people at the right price to get in. So this would be a good opportunity right now for dealers to, you know, access that cash. What, if I was a dealer, I wanted to take the next steps or find out more information. What, what would you guys recommend doing after this, after listening to this Dealer Insider video? Well, I would absolutely say, please reach out to us. Um, you can visit our website. You can reach out to either of us directly. And then we obviously have a, a team that's there to cater to our dealers. I think one of the most important things, especially in today's climates, is for a dealer to um, be educated, grab onto as much information as they can, make sure that they have an understanding of the various participation structures that are available to them, um, you know, the, the F and I uh, products are where they're really they have the opportunity to to build the most wealth at this point in time as a result of changes in the industry. And in order to take advantage of that, they have to know and understand what their options are, um, the compliance implication of those options, the tax implications of those options, um, and we're here to help. We're here to provide them with that information. Well, and really, if I could tag, no, no matter who a dealer is doing business with, whether it's us or, or, or any other F&I provider, I think they need, to Edvi's point, to understand what's available to them 
and to treat the F&I business as a viable part of their infrastructure and to really understand what fuels it and how they could better control it. I think you guys are right on with the education part and finding someone um, or a good partner that, that they can align with and get that information, especially because as you're maximizing your wealth, you know, there's compliance issues. Can you speak on that a little bit for me? Yeah, there, there are a plethora of compliance issues. Um, no matter which administrator or provider the dealer is working with, again, it's important for them to have a, at least enough subject matter expertise that they're conversant and that they can protect themselves and to ensure that they're working with someone in this space who, who obviously has the same. You know, we have a, a really deep bench when it comes to our compliance team here. Um, and that helps us kind of shape the different structures, the different um, tax opportunities and so on and so forth. You guys are so passionate about the Like, what is what drives your passion? I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> what, what drives our passion is really to make changes in an industry that's been doing things the same way for a long time. Right. We, we emerged into this market as the newcomers, you know, the new kids on the block, so to speak. And, and, you know, there were some advantages to that. And there were obviously some obstacles that we had to overcome. But persevering through what would otherwise be a difficult, you know, set of circumstances drives us to continue on. And, and probably the thing that drives us the most is when we can make a difference for a dealer partner or an agent partner and have that relationship be totally hinged on those differences we've made, you know, not trying to befriend the dealer or the agent and not trying to garner their respect through a personal relationship, but because we've done something professionally for them that no one else was able to do is kind of the best relationships we can form. And that drives us to continue to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Very well said. I mean, I, I personally am so passionate about the, the compliance and the regulatory side of it and the structure piece of it and the opportunity that my team has to kind of go in and prove wrong what may have been regurgitated for years and years in the industry because someone said something 10 years ago and that's where we're at 10 years later when there's so, so much more opportunity out there for our clients. Being able to sit across the table from them, from their accountants, from their counsel, whoever it may be, and explain, these are the opportunities that the law affords you um, and, and give them options to leverage. So that's exciting. I think, um, you know, personally and professionally, the entirety of our team is able to grow while really helping our dealers do the same. And you don't always have that uh, in, in a profession. That's great. And, you know, just, just this entire conversation was so refreshing. And, you know, just I, I think that our audience is really going to love everything that we just discussed Um you know, we just appreciate your time. We appreciate you guys sitting down with us. We appreciate um, you leading the industry, Edvi, as a woman in, in the automotive. Um, I look forward to seeing what great things you guys do in the near future. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity and for your time. And I absolutely wanted to thank you all, you know, for putting this this manner of recognition together. I think it's so important, like I said, to, to drive awareness of what contributions women are making. And I think these types of, um, of interviews and awards and whatnot will hopefully kind of pull in more women to the industry and allow us to tap a market that, it, that is sitting there of such talented people. So thank you for putting this together. We appreciate it. You guys have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.